Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Compact Claustrophobia. This is my first episode back from vacation. I had a wonderful time being with my girlfriend in Slovenia. We were in the countryside. It was wonderful. We were camping for around two weeks. It was very, very nice. And now we can proceed to our regularly scheduled episodes. So just to do a little bit of a recap, in the last episode we made this fusion reactor which is currently sitting at 96% efficiency and we're gonna see what happens when the temperature change drops to basically zero because of the active cooling and the efficiency rises all the way up to 100% which is gonna take probably another couple of hours of playtime to get there. But before we even get there, I wanna try and change this reactor to be lithium-7 and lithium-6 because if we look at the recipes here, if we use lithium-6 and lithium-6, we can produce 106,000 RF per tick, which is what I want to use to make power for the high-impact compactor. But the lithium-7 and the lithium-6 I just mentioned makes 55,000 RF per tick, and it also produces the neutron fluid. So we can basically just use this same reactor uh, to run the other reactor which is going to be bigger and it's going to require more power to uh, have all of the electromagnets be powered so what i'm going to do is i'm going to try and add a lever to the bottom of this and see if i can just turn this guy off i think you have to apply the redstone signal to the middle i believe or somewhere on the bottom yeah that turns it off the temperature starts dropping rapidly i think yeah, and if we turn it on, it's going to start increasing the... Yeah, the efficiency drops way, way quick. Okay, so can we do this really fast? Let me grab a lithium... Oh, we only have lithium-6, 7 melted. Okay, never mind. So <laughs> we have to do one thing first. Uh, we have our boron and lithium currently in this small compact machine uh, to be produced... Uh, the molten boron-11 and the molten boron-10 and the molten lithium-7... And that's pretty much it. So I think we're only using the Molten Boron 10 in some of the recipes here. I don't think we're using the other one for anything. I believe here in the electrolyzer, somewhere we're using Boron. Is it here? I saw the Boron. Molten Boron 10. Yeah, we're using that to make the uh, Diborain. So I don't think we need the other Boron. We wanted it uh, for the reactor, the Boron 11, I believe. But that reactor kind of didn't really work out. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take this melter, which has a servo that is extracting the uh, the boron that it melts, and we're going to kind of flip the thing around, and we're going to extract the tiny clumps of lithium-6, and we're going to melt those. And then we also probably need to control this isotope separator for the lithium-6 and the lithium-7. So I'm going to do a little bit of reworks down here. And I'm going to see if I can fit everything in and make it look kind of nice. I have the lithium portion completed over here. And I realized one thing. We don't really need to split the borons here. Because if we look at the recipes here, if we look at the melted boron 11, it's used in the chemical reactor to make diborane. And this switches between molten boron. If we look here for diborane, molten boron 10, boron 11, or just molten boron. So what we can potentially do, instead of the isotope separator, we just have a melter and a tank. And that's it. And we can not store molten boron 10, we can store just the regular molten boron. And then I believe in the electrolyzers here, in this chemical reactor, we can just export uh, boron, just the regular molten boron, and it should still make molten, uh, or regular diborane, and that should be fine. I decided to just squeeze in the boron in the corner and that leaves another spot for another melter if we need to melt something else in the future, for example, or any other machines for that matter that would need some space. We can put them in here if need be, but we can now just cover up these things on the corners as well and that should be wonderful. One thing that was brought up in the comments is the resonant ender or uh, this Resonant under buckets. This teleports you, right? Or maybe not. <laughs> okay, so that was just the test I wanted to conduct. Does it work in here? Do we get teleported like outside of the compact machine if I put it here? No, okay, so the teleportation feature from the resonant ender has been disabled. Okay, so we got that out of the way at least. 
Now we need to tackle this guy. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab a bucket of lithium six as well. And we're gonna add this over in here in this exporter like so. And what we're gonna do is prevent input overflow. And we're just gonna clear this tank and it should start putting in lithium six. Yeah, and the power and the temperature should just filter themselves to the right spot, I think. I don't think it should cause an issue. It should still make the same stuff, the helium and the neutron fluid. And we should still see this increasing slowly. If we look in the fluid grid, we can see 4,900 millibuckets. And we're gonna see if the next thing is gonna make another 10 millibuckets eventually. So that should be fine. The energy is now rising. Okay, I think it reset up again. So it's making power gen 55,200 RF per tick. Uh, why are you not extracting it to the bin though? Do I need to replace this? Is energy 72? Hmm. Efficiency 100%. Okay, so that raised up. So we're making 55,200 RF per tick. Even though everything is fine. Temperature chain minus 2. Everything looks to be fine, I think. So we can use this to power another one. So we're gonna grab a bunch of electromagnets. I think it can only make like two stacks at a time and then tough alloy needs to be made. But uh, we're gonna make those and I'm gonna make another fusion core, which somebody in the comments was like, you made the super super difficult fusion core task super simple by autocrafting it. Well, yeah, that's, that's what I do. That's how we do things in the Fiki Breaker house. Okay. So the next reactor that I want to do is going to be, I believe, lithium-6 times 2. Because that is going to make 100,000 something RF per tick. I don't know if this is enough to, to run the, uh, the high impact compactor. Uh, another thing that we can probably just simply do is we can take this guy and put, pump the power into a compact machine that is our power storage. And then we can pump out the power out of this compact machine into the high impact compactor room. That could be a thing, because people said that I can use the the cells from, there's, there's some power things from nuclear craft. And these guys, voltaic piles, these are the ones. We can make elite ones, which uh, just require a bunch of crafting. I think we can use those for power storage. Oh, there's batteries, those, those are the ones that we need. Yeah, yeah, the batteries. Uh, those are EU power tier six. Yeah, we can just simply make that. The lithium ion cell, we now have everything necessary. Ooh, we might not have the lithium manganese dioxide thing. That's simply enough to automate. Uh, but actually, ah, doing all the wrong things. So let me, before we do another fusion reactor, right? Let me try that. It's a simple three-step process to get ourselves some lithium manganese dioxide alloy. And it starts with redstone furnacing, the crushed rhodosochrosite that we're getting. Rhodochrosite, that's the one, uh, that we're getting from our crushers. And we're gonna set the manganese oxide dust to be a thousand in here. So that should start running and exporting it into here. This is gonna furnace it and put it into here. We do have external storages on the bottom, which is wonderful. Uh, then the next step goes over to the side because we need two exporters for the fluid infuser and we need to oxygenize this oxide dust to make dioxide. So we're gonna add this to the exporter and we're gonna set this to a thousand over here. And we're gonna say the manganese dioxide dust. So that should start exporting that into here, hopefully. Exporter only work with redstone signal. Um, you're on external storage. Oh, this might be configured for something else and it might not show in here. That could possibly be the case. Yep, it's molten boron 10, blacklist items. There we go. So we should now do the fluid infusing. Okay, we need a couple of servos here. So one over here to extract this out. That should put it into here. Nice. And then we're gonna extract this manganese dioxide dust and lithium dust to make ourselves some of this lithium manganese dioxide alloy. And you should be on redstone as well. And we can grab ourselves, I got lost a moment ago, uh, that, and we are gonna set it to a thousand. We don't need 5,000, I don't think of this. 
Actually, we might need a bunch for the batteries, but let's do let's do 5,000, right? Not 50, uh, 5. Should be fine. And now we can actually make those batteries. Uh, I have the recipes uh, all set up, uh, and that is actually not the right battery that we want. That's the advanced one, the basic one, the DU, and the elite. So that's tier power 6. Uh, if we do one of those, we're still missing the hard carbon and we're missing 245 of the lithium manganese dioxide. So hard carbon, uh, wrong thing, hard carbon. It's not a difficult thing to make, but it requires diamond nuggets. So that is going to be uh, a bit of a thing. Uh, and we can actually stick it in the, in the machine that we were just in because there was one more spot, I believe, right here, alloy furnace. Cool. And we're going to grab graphite dust that we are making and diamond nuggets that we are not automatically making. Uh, but we're going to at least make 256 of hard carbon alloy. I think that should be fine. Uh, so we can do one of these. And you're just going to be set to no redstone for the moment, just so you start making this. And we're going to grab some upgrades. Boom, boom. Don't think we need this to be extremely fast. But 16 should do, I think. Over here. There we go. Okay. Uh, we can now set you to redstone. We're going to say hard carbon detector. Make me 256. Emit when the signal is under the amount. There we go. And we're going to toss the hard carbon into this cache. Flip it over. Boom. And servo. Done. Cool. Cool. Hard carbon completed. It's going to use 256 or does it use one diamond nugget per two? Yeah, it's one diamond nugget per two. So it's going to use 128 diamond nuggets to make the 256 of this. Now check this if it's all good. Wonderful. So uh, there is an update to the pack that I have installed. We're on version 1.3.5, which is the latest one. And for the diamond nuggets, there is now a new recipe. Uh, we can still do the the exploding, which has 5% more chance, which makes me sad because yesterday when I was playing on the previous version, I blew up like a thousand of HOP graphite ingots in preparation for today's episode, uh, not knowing that the update's going to come out and increase the chance, which is fine. So there's a high impact compactor recipe for diamond nuggets, which we can automate because HOP graphite ingots are automated and we can just automatically say how many diamond nuggets we want. As far as diamonds go, I think there is a there's a there's a recipe or a recipe. There's a challenge, I think, in the quest book here. Uh, in the challenges, there is like to make 500 diamond uh, blocks or something is the challenge, which basically means as much as as much HOP graphite ingots that we can make, we can run through the thing to make diamonds, and that should be a thing. Also, one thing that we can easily do is once we get to a diamond pickaxe, which is going to be soon, and we can claim this quest uh, because I have prepared all the items for the high impact compactor. And once we get a diamond pickaxe, there is a neat system that we can set up to infinitely use the same diamond pickaxe over and over and over and over and over again, um, which I'm going to show you in a moment. Uh, there was also another quest that I saw somewhere, uh, which I missed. Yeah, this thing. This is a new thing, measuring energy. There's an energy meter, which is a simple recipe. So energy meter. Uh, it's a block of iron and a bit of cobblestone. So this supports FERF and everything. So this has transfer rate, transfer rate limits, total transfer status not connected, transfer rate limit, display units, RF, redstone inverted, ignored, active. Okay, so I don't know how this works, but what we can try probably. Let's go here, right? We have the 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 cube here. What if we take this off? This is gonna turn off my storage system, which is fine. But we're gonna grab the tunnel and put this in. Okay, so that's gonna show how much RF is being produced, I think. 500 FV, 240. Total transferred unlimited FE per tick, status active. Oh yeah, uh, left, right, output. Oh, you can only have one input? Is that the case? Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this, put it here, 
gonna set the input on the bottom and we're gonna grab another hardened right uh, we're gonna grab this guy and put you here so that should if we flip you around like that and set the input on the bottom that should start showing how much power this is making no I don't understand now. It worked a second ago. Does it need an output? Can we do this? Bottom input. Ha, ah, there we go. Okay. Um, top is output. Are you transferring power out of this? No, this is filling up with power. Okay. Okay, okay. Now it's showing 941.5 something FE per tick. Okay, so what we can do is we can set this backside to be output. We're gonna move you up at the tunnel here. And this needs to hook up to the cable. Try stabilized flux stock. And grab you up, put you here, and that should still be getting power. Slowly drain in power. Oh, no, now you're getting power. Okay, cool. It just filled up the backlog. But this is now showing how much power I'm making. Okay, that's neat. Right, so what we can do is we can also make another one of these and we can toss them here by the fusion reactor. We can do possibly this. Left side input, right side output. And showing 40 something RF per tick. It's showing because it's draining a bit as well. So it's uh, really kind of weird, but at least it's doing something. And I think the power is still transferring because otherwise the fusion reactor would have uh, probably shut off, but it's still running and doing its thing and it's producing power. Awesome. Another thing that I want to mention that you can do now is the Instabulation Apparatus has another recipe that doesn't require diamonds. It requires Boron Nitride Swords, which is still pretty much of a gate to get to this cubic Boron Nitride, but we can at least make this now if we wanted to. And that means that we could potentially make the slime farm a bit smaller, but it's done so far and it's working beautifully. So I'm not gonna go and change it and add anything, but it would mean that we could replace this iron golem with the um, instabulation apparatus in a centrifugal separator and the morbs you put into a, a I believe it's an encapsulator of sorts creature encapsulator, basically. You put the morbs in here, it would capture the slime, you put it through the separator. So if we grab, let's say slime, if we look at the morb, uh, we would get two slime balls per basically captured slime. Uh, and it would mean that we would get potentially more slime, but I don't think we are actually in need of it. So it should be fine. So I'm currently waiting for hard carbon to get completed because we can't make the elite battery just yet we're missing a little bit of hard carbon. So I think we can easily make another maximum compact machine where we're gonna make the high impact compactor. And I believe in the poop poopificator, I have tossed the 36 glitched large machine machines through and you should have probably made, oh, you're stuck. Why are you stuck? Ender pulse maybe? No, we have ender pulse. Go, oops, go your thing uh compact machine it made 36 oh it didn't turn off oh yeah yeah yeah. okay hold on the probably the detector is what's doing the wrong thing this is set to equal let's say when under the amount um it's gonna make 37 which is perfectly fine but it should at least not break i think the having it on equals is a little bit weird because sometimes it triggers sometimes it doesn't so this way it should just turn off right now yeah, that should be good. Okay, so to make the another maximum compact machine, we need just to grab some compact machine walls and we need to do the whole three by three with six walls in the middle and get ourselves the glitched uh, giant machines. And apparently it's making more. Why are you making more? I don't know. Check the timers and we're gonna check the things something is broken but I don't know why you should be making more mit 
Oh, it needs to turn off the timer. Um, yeah. Up oh, the amount. That, that, that might fix the problem. Anywho, so I'm gonna make another maximum compact machine so we can stick the high impact compactor inside of it and we can power it using our fusion reactor and the battery storage that we're gonna set up next. Now that we have another maximum compact machine, we can add a cryostabilized flux duct and that is the reason that this wasn't extracting power fully because if we add the universal bin back right here, it extracts all the power uh, and that was pretty much the issue. So in here, we're gonna put up a tunnel once we set up the high impact compactor, which we have the blueprint for right here. I believe once we add this and this, we should have a complete high amp, high impact compactor. Nice, it's missing an input item. So what we need to do is we need to add a ladder kind of like here in the middle and we're gonna add probably ladders. Well, we don't need them on these sides. Uh, so what we need is tunnels here on the sides. One is gonna be east and one is gonna be west and the east one is gonna be the input and then the west one is gonna be the output here on this side. Let's see, west, there we go. Okay, so if we now head outside here, we can go and add a couple, let's say, uh, strong boxes and a couple of ducts. We can use impulse item ducts. I made a few extra ones and then we can add some servos Actually, I don't think we're gonna, we're just gonna need one for the input. The output should automatically be put out. So it should be fine. We add this here, impulse item duct here and here. So that is the east side and the west side. And if we do a servo here like so, and I'm gonna grab diamond nuggets. I'm gonna grab enough to make three diamonds because that is pretty much what we need. And I'm gonna try and toss nine in here. That should get extracted. And if we come in here, we can pretty much set our position to be, let's say right here, so we never have to climb that ladder. But this is missing input item. Did you make the diamond already? Do you have enough power? We have a diamond. We do not have a diamond. It extracted the nuggets. They p should be in here. Hmm. Are you guys in here? No. We add nine in there. Missing, oh, it's processing. Oh, we might need, oh yeah, it's in the output. Ha, huh, I gotcha, we need a retriever. I assume that should do it. Retriever. We do this. Here, we should get the diamonds coming in, I hope. Because hmm. it doesn't automatically output. Can we add a servo and would that still make it for a valid structure? Is that a thing that we can do? Uh, if we grab a servo and if we head on in here, can I still add that over here and that extracts the item? That extracts the diamonds. Is this gonna stay as the same structure? 
It's the same structure. Okay. So that, that did work, and we don't even need a battery. It, this just works with, with the amount of power that we have. So we should have three diamonds now. Eventually. Aha! Three diamonds. Achievement get! We did it! <laughs> Woo! Okay. So, in here... Let's look at the quests. Limited dimensions. We can now make a diamond pickaxe. Uh, with... with... Possibly sticks, not diamonds. Diamond pickaxe. You want an only. Nice. And we can now get... Oh, we can now get wither skeleton skulls. With a multi-block crafter. Okay. Glowstone block of endurium. Lots of blocks of coal. Gets us a wither skeleton skull. We totally need to do this. Because we can then get ourselves... Um, we can get flight. Because we can get... Another star, which we can turn into a we we can turn into a coin of flight. I think coin of flight. That's the one. We need another star. Yeah, we're gonna do this next before we do anything with the diamond pickaxe. The amount of coal that you need for one wither skeleton skull is quite ridiculous. You need around 800 and a little bit for each. So currently our coal production is working hard. Oh, actually, you know what? Do I have a crafting recipe for? Can you make me like 3,000 coal from the tiny coals that we have? Never mind. I can easily... Oh, I could have just requested... We can just request this. And that should use the tiny coals to make coal. Never mind. I pretty much have enough coal to do this. I thought I was going to have to wait. Anyway, Hoozle. That's not the, the full thing. Did I make this wrong? Uh, Wither... I had it written. Wither skeleton skull. What do you need? It's too... Oh, uh, glowstone. I assume it's in the center. Possibly. Maybe in the top, because it doesn't really show. Um, glowstone. Are you just, like, here? Let's try that and see if we can... If that's the case. No. Nope. Then it must be one lower. We're going to do a coal block. One of these. Like that. Because normally it's in the center of the thing. Yeah, there we go. All right. That's gonna make us have a wither skeleton skull. I'm gonna assemble the other one as well, and then make the, all of the three, and we can then fight ourselves a wither boss. All right, I think I'm just gonna try this. We're gonna place this down. We're gonna leave, and then we're gonna wait until it explodifies, which I don't know if it's gonna show in here, but I'm gonna give it a few more moments. Is it gonna show when it's fully done? Oh, I think I... Oh no, It we have to be in here, apparently. Right before it's gonna blow up, I'm gonna try and leave. Oh, there we go. We can regen our health. <laughs> we can eat our golden apples, because that took half our health. And then we can possibly go and kill it. <clears throat> Hopefully. We have absorption. We have our apples. I'm gonna fill up on saturation. We can come in here. Kill it. I have two layers of hearts. I have no idea how many hearts it took. I think it's taking down our first layer. It should be fine. Okay, we're gonna leave. We're gonna eat. <laughs> and it should regen its health back a little bit, but we should be okay, I think. There we go, we're back on full. Coming in. Come on, hit it. There we go. I'm trying to get crits in as well. Possible. One couple more hits. Aha! We did it. Awesome. We have ourselves another star. I'm gonna eat more food. So we can regen the health and not die of the wither. Nice. Awesome. So with the wither star, we can now make ourselves a ring. Coin, even. Of flight. Do we have two feathers? We do have two feathers. Coin of flight. We can fly. It's amazing. Awesome. Wonderful. I decided to add Soulbound 3 to our coin of flight so we can never lose it. And that will have to bring 
this episode to an end. So I want to thank you all so much for watching. I'm hoping you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to hit the like button. You can also subscribe to get notified of when new videos go live. And you can support me on Patreon as well if you want for that extra support. And I will see you all in the next episode. Have a good one. Bye-bye.